Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, back at it. Had a nice day of progress yesterday on the uh, Airstream restoration renovation project. Um, got the framework all redone. As those of you that have been following along have under, you know, are understanding that. Uh, frame repairs have all been made. I spent a couple days doing the POUR 15 uh, treatment method to the frame itself. Uh, so I gave it two coats, two thin coats of the actual, well, for, actually first I hit everything with a wire brush. Uh, hit it with the, uh, what they call their degreaser, um, Pour 15's metal degreaser product. Uh, you gotta rinse that, you gotta let it dry thoroughly. Matter of fact, they say it to be bone dry before you apply the paint. Uh, then I hit it with the metal prep uh, to let it get, you know, that's supposed to make the Pour 15 product adhere a little better to, uh, you know, whatever metal or whatever application you're trying to, uh, use it on so uh, you know I wanted to be sure to follow every kind of step-by-step -step process that the uh, application required uh, so did the metal prep let it dry uh, of course ran into a couple days of rain things like that uh, but once it was good and dry uh, put a couple coats of the um, pour 15 product on you have to let it dry for two to four hours I ended up letting mine dry overnight um, and hitting it the next day with the second coat and then I they say you don't have to put the top coat on it if it's an area that's not going to be subjected to consistent or, uh, in their words, prolonged uh, UV exposure. Uh, for me, I really didn't know how long my frame was going to be sitting out in the sunlight. I only anticipated maybe a week, but, you know, sometimes life gets in the way and the next thing you know, it could be sitting there for a month or two. So uh, I went ahead and applied the top coat. And I guess where I'm going with that is if, if you're not going to, uh, you know, leave your frame or whatever you're coating with this pore 15 uh, in direct sunlight for a prolonged period of time, you don't have to coat it with the top coat. But just for me, I, you know, better safe than sorry. I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know how long it was going to be out there in, in the weather anyway. So went ahead and hit it with the uh, top coat. I actually used the uh, spray cans. I just felt that that was a better application. I bought a, a one pint jar and I could have used that and rolled it on. Um, but this was faster and since I didn't need it anyway, I thought, you know, it's better, better, certainly better than nothing. Um, and I went ahead and hit everything that was mainly going to be, um, you know, within, um, exposure to the sun. Um, but a few days later, things worked out. I was able to, uh, yesterday, Sunday, was able to get the frame back up off the ground or the shell back up off the ground and rolled the frame underneath it. And so now I'm installing the subfloor, attempting to. I've made some templates. Um, I slid a piece of four by eight sheet, five sixteenths plywood. <clears throat> it's untreated or anything yet. I went ahead and slid that on top of the frame and lined it up, you know, to where it was equal distance on both sides of the outriggers. Uh, I did the one sheet in the front, one sheet in the back, and then dropped the shell back down. Uh, and got it to where I, you know, pretty darn close to where I think it's going to be. I mean, the holes were lining up on the outriggers as you kind of went around the frame, you know, making sure everything was good and square and lined up. And just took a pencil and scribed the inside, um, you know, where the C channel would, C channel sits on, obviously on the, on, the, on the top of the plywood, right? Um, so I just took a pencil and went around, traced that line, if you will, uh, onto the plywood. I did inside the trailer and outside of the trailer. So I had kind of a, a general understanding of how wide the channel was and what was inside and what was outside. I went ahead and cut it to the outside diameter. Uh, I know that's obviously going to be too big, but I would certainly rather make a few cuts than make one cut that's, you know, too short or too much product gone. And now I got to replace an entire sheet of plywood. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Uh, I just want to get this front and rear piece cut so I can get it fit, make sure it's going to fit, trim it up where I need to, to, to trim it. Uh, and then from that point forward, really the next uh, three pieces of plywood, uh, all I have to do is, is, is kind of rip those the same width of the trailer. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to have to you know, cut any weird angles out or anything like that. Not until I get into the middle of the trailer where the tranks, tanks would sit. Uh, I'll have to cut those a little shorter, but the only two pieces with a curve are your front and your rear, uh, which is nice. Everything else are just going to be straight, straight cuts. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm hoping it's going to be this easy. I'm hoping it's going to be this simple. Um, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of in and out, out of the trailer, no doubt about it. Uh, but like I said, I'd rather measure 10 times and cut once versus taking too much off the first time. So I appreciate you guys kind of checking in, tuning in, see what's going on. Uh, this project has certainly taken me 
uh, a heck of a lot longer than I thought it ever would. And it's a heck of a lot more work than I ever thought it would be. But it's, you know, it's very nice. It's a very, very good feeling uh, to be actually putting things back together versus taking them apart. So, um, yeah, we'll just go from there. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.